Good morning, folks. You're watching Plasma Filaments Dance Over the Limb in 304 Angstroms. I want to begin by thanking George Nori for an amazing time on Coast to Coast just a few hours ago. And if you could thank him, that would be great too. He's shockingly knowledgeable about the magnetic reversal. We've got news from California to the cosmos, so let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last 24 hours on our star very quiet. You see the dark southern coronal hole turning towards the limb, and of course, there is one bright active region on the Earth facing half of the Sun. It has produced absolutely no solar flares, however. And to complement the previous day's viewing of the simple spread magnetic umbral core setup, we will today examine the umbral magnetic fields in ionized iron. 171 angstrom emission. These fields are producing a large canopy, not much interaction counter to it or beneath it. Its best chance to flare will be when it finally decays and the canopy collapses. Solar wind here. Continued variability and fluctuations in modest range only has left the geomagnetic conditions above dead quiet but still short of even modest instability. The departing coronal hole is expected to impact Earth with its solar wind as the weekend begins. Possible low-level geomagnetic storm effects are really the maximum likely disruption. Two quick video shares, first a meteor fireball from the Pleasant Prairie police dash cams, and a freak hailstorm hit an East Anglian highway. Nobody got the event in situ apparently, but here's the aftermath. Yeesh. Let's go to California, and indeed, it has been suspiciously long since the faults in the western U.S. remembered exactly what they are. The scientists don't make any specific forecast for a timeline of the next one, but indeed, at 6.6 .6 in December of 2016, offshore at the Mendocino Junction, did hit a red alert posted by QuakeWatch.net, and we do believe the next one could follow a similar pattern. On to NOAA, and they are comparing their winter forecast to what actually happened. Forecasts on the left, actual events on the right. Precipitation not great, but not as bad as temperature, where it's truly a story of colors, and the data is telling the same story in quantitative form. Up next is the gamma ray bursts. These high-energy photon surges from deep space are known to originate in major cosmic blasts, and scientists have logged many of them. Now, a new study seeks to rewrite how they're occurring. The theory has been that the gamma rays are coming when the jet interacts with the medium, causing accelerations of the particles and high-energy emissions. However, the latest data is suggesting that it's actually coming from the photosphere itself, down at the surface of the explosive event that triggers the jets. Must be a difficult distinction to make. Up next, interesting piece on lithium abundance in early stars and how it might rewrite and cause some issues with Big Bang nucleosynthesis hypotheses. Apparently there's too much of the triple proton element. We are now looking at a calcium aluminum inclusion in magnesium, and it might look relatively innocuous to us now, but in the right hands. It tells these scientists that the solar system irradiance abundance is due not only to other stellar novas in the formation stages of our solar system, but in solar protons released in super flares over time, and possibly exclusively so. They say it might just be the sun. We have the Subaru telescope slashing one of the remaining undebunked dark matter ideas and regarding black holes as well, which will make many of you happy twice. And out of Johns Hopkins, we have yet another failure to find an interaction profile hypothesized for dark matter particles. Speaking of dark matter, I hope you saw that yesterday afternoon we posted a video with Dr. Mannheim of UConn, who walks down both a physics-based and then summarized logic-based debunking of dark matter and the arguments for many of the same things argued by Plasma Universe proponents as well. Definitely a must-see 12 minutes, and we thank him very much as well. Right now at otf.cells.com, in celebration of hitting 400,000 subscribers, thank you very much by the way, you can use the coupon code 400K, make sure the K is capitalized, to get 25% off your entire order, otf.cells.com. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support and your letting both George Norrie and Dr. Mannheim know how much their time means to us. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 3.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.